Uh, okay, let's try and get this in one take. Okay, so let's go ahead and show how this works. Boom, 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 boom. All right, Pathfinder, pretty cool. All right, so what does this do? Okay, essentially we set up all of our values in Forge. Um, then we're going to initialize all of these, um, all of these keybinds here. Then, um, so pretty much every client tick, uh, is, uh, once once the phase ends, and we're gonna make sure Minecraft does does uh, exist because this is during startup, and to make sure the player exists so is when they're in the world. All right, so this is uh, pretty much just if pathfinding was attempted. This is gonna be explained later actually, but uh, if it isn't being attempted, then then you. Uh, it just goes on to the normal stuff, so you're gonna have like our, our set uh, position for the dexterous algorithm. So it's gonna set the first position. Um, so essentially, uh, here it checks like like if the path they already exists, then you shouldn't be changing the starting place. So what it's gonna do is it's going to take a moving ob object position. It's just gonna ray trace twenty thousand blocks out, but it's that's really unnecessary actually. It's gonna start in the position of the algorithm. It's gonna save that as a block position. It's kind of going to do the same for um, the end position. This was just some weird code, though. don't worry about that. Uh, does the same thing, Rachel's 20 blocks out, gets the end position, all right. So uh, once it sets all of this up, it's going to say, okay, sick, now we're ready to, um, now we're ready to start a pathfinding, right? But there's also some uh, clear path, so if you want to uh, end the path, you want to create a new path, then this is the button you use, you reset the path, it doesn't roll that follow path to actually um, follow the algorithm that's being traced and then okay so while this while it's true while the follow path is true it's going to check whether the cube positions this is um, the cubes that you see here these the, these little guys these little guys all right the cube positions and if it's in a ray tracing path um, this is for error checking the current path index is greater than the cube position size, so it's just checking, you know, whether out of bounds um, sequences would happen. Um, and you know, if it is, then it's going to reset the path and it's gonna it's gonna try again. And then, uh, if it's not, then what we're gonna do is we are going to um, essentially, you know, just follow the path. So it's gonna look for the path. It's gonna look for the instead of following the actual line that's being drawn, it's gonna follow cube positions. So that's that's pretty much what it's doing here. And um, yeah, so it's setting, so essentially, if you saw how I followed the path, it sets the player's direction, the, um, where the cubes are. And then it's, it, it's just some bug fixing. You add a little bit of the value so it doesn't spaz out for some reason. It locks the keys. Um, actually, it kind of doesn't, but whatever. Um, and text checks if it's a turning point, then it changes the yaw based on that. Um, and after it's done, it attempts to clear the path. Sometimes, uh, I'm not really sure, it's a little patchy. Um, and then, yeah, so essentially it sets uh, end positions, and then uh, next position, path too close to current, current position, next position too close, so skip it. And yeah, so it's just kind of like um, like not, not doing too many meticulous uh, cube movements because it'll, uh, it, sometimes it stops at the cues, but then it doesn't, now, now it doesn't, because it's like more smooth. The show key, so show speed is more like debugging for um, anti-cheat bypasses, so yeah, that, that's not useful at all actually. So, um, essentially what you do now is here, uh, we set up a thread, so there's just like a separate um, part outside of the main Minecraft thread, so it's kind of like its own container almost, where it runs its own code, so it takes, so uh, it makes sure that the start and end position are there, make sure the pathfinding thread isn't being run at the current moment, and then it will um, run the pathfinding algorithm in the world the player is in, start, end position, blah blah blah, and this takes a line deviation thread, so if you're too far away from the current position that you're supposed to be at, then it'll reposition, so it'll say, well, Let's say they're 10 blocks away from where they're supposed to be, then I'll say, okay, we're gonna take the player's position, then we're going to take the end position, uh, and then we're not we're gonna change the start position, uh, but keep the end position the same, and then you're gonna 
root from the player's position to the end position instead. So that's pretty easy, actually. Then it's going to start the threads. And then um, this is the render. So what you actually see here, what you'd actually see. So every tick, it's actually like drawn to this, um, this line. Right, so it's going to get the player's position. It's going to push. Um, it's going to open it. It's going to use GL, GL11, just push some um, basic data to uh, essentially just, you know, write over. So this is drawing the path, this is rendering the lines, and then the, yeah, yeah. so this is actually rendering the lines, and then just drawing the path and the cubes, so this is, these are actually the cubes. Uh, I wouldn't go into which depth, this is pretty easy. And then, um, just checks for cube positions, and then it's done, all right? So this is get distance. So get distance essentially just, um, it's for like, actually in the uh, fine path bike shot it's it's, it's uh, some background calculations so we're in uh, fine path bike it's going to set a priority queue then it's just going to search it's pretty much just going to search out nodes so it's like uh where, where's the mouse okay it's going to go like this one two three four two three four if you're starting here this is your end position it pretty much just goes from here, 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 and then checks, you know, which, which one's the most efficient, essentially. And, uh, yeah, it, it just does that, so it's, it's just, um, and then, and then if there's, like, obstacles, it'll, it'll try to move around it, like that, so that's, that's pretty much, that's, that's the pretty basic part of it. Um, and then, um, this actually just sets the timer, it is really crucial, so the code doesn't break, but essentially, if it's um, if it can't find a path within ten seconds, then it pretty much shuts itself down. The point of doing this is sometimes if you have um, paths that literally cannot be like accomplished, like from here to here, there's nothing like up here to magically get the player from here to here. Right? You can't like. I mean, there's, there probably is a way, but I haven't taught the pathfinding algorithm to actually jump on blocks and climb stuff. So it says could not find path find in time. So that's just a fail safe. Also helps with uh, threading because that's hard. And I'm not gonna explain this. Most of this is pretty easy. It just checks like you know if this stair slab is gonna be good follow through. I'm not reading all of this. It's like forty thousand words. Last time I put it in. Um, crap. It just checks like it just checks some corners. I think I reused some values. That's why the G value was kind of messed up. G value is um, the 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 heuristics cost. So like. How costly, costly with quotes is it to get to this point? And I might have messed it up, so I might need to tweak that later in the future. But this is the check for line deviation. So this is uh, what I explained earlier. If they're too far away from the original point, then it's going to um, it's going to root from the player's position to the end position. So it's essentially just changing the start position. Then it's rerouting. Add additional queue positions. It's just this fine tuning, um, fine tuning the. The lines uh, around turns so sometimes you might see like extra cubes like these guys okay, it's, uh, I think it's these guys that are being added some of these are being added those are the extra cube positions and uh, that's just a fine tune because it is following the cubes not the actual line which is a little weird because sometimes it'll mess up um, this is performing a ray trace so essentially around the corners um, so if it's like trying to get around to here Right? Sometimes it'll it'll turn too soon, right? But then um, what I what I can do is I can set a ray trace so it says uh, 0 0.5 blocks out. And this this right here is 0 0.5 blocks out, right? It, it'll hit it and it'll be like, oh shoot, I'm hitting a block, so it's gonna be like, oh oh oh, and it's gonna it's gonna select a random point out here and then turn from there because the uh, algorithm is trying to go from the cleanest point, but it, it doesn't realize that it's it's undershooting the turn, so it's it's gonna attempt to overshoot the turn instead. Um, Check ray trace result that just verifies it and then uh, resets the pathfinding from a, a different random point. Find a random solid block in your player. Just um, this just for fine path dice if you need like like um, find ballot paths and this just reset path so it follows the path. Key bind states are reset. Um, timing is reset. Threads are reset. This is so annoying. It set um, artificial sleeps for some reason for this to work. So. If you actually run this, you'll notice that it lags a little bit. Right.
right at the very end, right like that, and then it, and then it goes away. Um, honestly, I'm not even sure why that works, why that happens. Um, this is all pretty unoptimized. I'm not gonna lie. Anyone who tries to fix this will cry. But you know what? That's all it. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty cool. And if you do long distance calculations, um, it's kind of bad because it takes a long time, more than 10 seconds. So what I've tried to do is um, split up the calculations. So it's gonna say. If you're from here to here, let's just say it's a really long calculation. So say, okay, we'll go to here, or or it might only go out to like a, a certain amount of blocks. Um, so you can say if it's like what 50 blocks out, you just take a guesstimate. You can say if it's like 50 blocks out, you can say uh, graph out 10 points, 10 points, 10 points, and then it'll uh, it'll essentially just split itself up into different calculations, which will run in the background. One that make faster calculations, and two that um save compute power you know so and also it looks cooler um, what I'm trying to do is instead of having a straight solid line um, it's actually invisible and once you walk towards it in the future like, 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 like it will, it, it, all of that will be gone and then once you start walking then it'll appear and it'll disappear behind you so it's a pretty cool UI stuff and uh, yeah I think that's about all all right bye